We're getting a more detailed picture of the chain of events that led to David Petraeus's resignation as head of the CIA Friday, but questions continue to swirl about why lawmakers in the White House were kept in the dark for months as the FBI investigated the affair between Petraeus and his biographer Paula Broadwell. The investigation was centered, after all, on emails that raised at least the possibility the CIA chief's email had been compromised. The Post's Sari Horwitz has been helping suss out the details and joins us now. Good to see you. Hi, how are you? This all starts with a woman whose name we're just learning today, Jill Kelly, going to the FBI and saying, wait a minute, I'm getting these threatening emails, right? Exactly. Jill Kelly is a woman who lives in Tampa, Florida. She's 37 years old. She's married to a surgeon and has two children. And in early summer, she starts getting emails that were of a harassing, threatening nature. She apparently knows somebody in the FBI, and she goes to the FBI and says, what can I do about these? I don't know who they're from. But the emails reference Petraeus, right? She knows that it, much. They don't have his name, but they reference, they're sort of nasty emails uh, with the insinuation, I know what you're doing. I know what you're up to. And while there's been no uh, improper relationship established between Kelly and Petraeus, these emails kind of hint that whoever was writing them thought there might be one. Exactly. Whoever was writing them thought there was an intimate relationship between the two of them. At this point, uh, law enforcement officials tell me uh, they don't know what exactly was the relationship. It may have just been a, a social friendship between the two of them. And after not long, the FBI realizes who these emails are coming from. Exactly. The FBI is very good at, at finding out about emails, so people should be careful on their emails. <laughs> That's the main lesson as we dig into this. My goodness, nothing's private. It's definitely the private. main lesson. There's a whole cyber criminal division of the Justice Department and of the FBI. And once they start looking at your emails, uh, there's nowhere to hide, really. And they determine uh, pretty quickly in the investigation that these emails were coming from a woman in Charlotte, North Carolina, named Paula Broadwell. And that's the biographer who we now know was having the affair with Petraeus. And in reading exactly. Broadwell's emails, that's how they discovered the affair, even though Petraeus's emails to Broadwell are also from an alias. Exactly. What happens is they come across these emails between someone who purports to be Petraeus and Paula Broadwell, and they are of a sexual, very explicit nature. And so they're worried that someone has broken into, hacked, uh, the CIA director's email account, that this can't really be David Petraeus. So they're looking at this as a security breach. They start investigating, this is all through the summer, and they determine that, no, it's not a security breach. These are really emails from David Petraeus, who is having an intimate relationship. And all the while, they don't contact Congress or the White House. Correct. What uh, what law enforcement officials say is that it would be completely inappropriate to contact the White House, Congress, or anyone outside of the investigation during a criminal investigation. That's a very closed probe that they're doing. The FBI goes to the Justice Department in the late summer, but what they tell the Justice Department is there's no security breach of Petraeus's computer. What we think we have here is an affair. We don't think there's going to be any criminal charges. So at that point, what is the responsibility of the Justice Department, I've been told. There's, the officials are saying, well, what do we do with this now? There's no criminal investigation, and there's no national security issue. So why go to Congress or the White House? Uh, last thing, I know we've already covered a lot. There is, this is how these intimate affairs turn into to big things in Washington. Perhaps Paula Broadwell knows details of what happened in Benghazi that suggests that she had some communication with Petraeus about it. Yes, Paula Broadwell gives many speeches, um, especially about her book, and there was a speech she gave this fall. And in this speech, she indicates that she knows details about what happened in Benghazi that had not been reported before, especially involving, allegedly, some prisoners that the CIA had. Now, the CIA quickly last night knocked, down, knocked that down and said that was not true, that her information was inaccurate. But that video did raise questions. Did she know things that the Hill doesn't know um, and that the public doesn't know about what happened in Libya? Okay. This will not be the last time we discuss this, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it will not be. Sarah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you.